Hi, it's Steph. Welcome back to my garden. So today I have two new containers that I recently purchased that I need to fill with potting soil. So this time of year, we're all working on getting our plants together for summer and filling our beautiful containers, and that involves a lot of potting soil. We think we're gonna have enough, and inevitably we run out after just one or two pots. So because these are new containers, I'm gonna have to use quite a bit of potting soil to get them filled. And so I'm gonna share with you a trick that I do in order to save on potting soil. You have a new hobby? I'm fishing for recyclables. I'm gonna use them in, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use them in. But yes, that's what I'm doing. I'm fishing in the recycle bed. <laughs> Okay, so these are my two pots and they're pretty big. So now I, what I wanna do is I wanna take up volume. So I was fishing in the recycle bin and I found a couple of things. Here's some strawberry, um, a strawberry carton, some two liter soda bottles. You can also use uh, gallons like milk jugs or water containers, juice bottles, anything like that. And the goal is just to put these in your pot to take up volume. So if you have things in there taking up space, that is less area that the soil has to fill. The other good thing about this is that it will um, facilitate drainage. So typically when you fill up your pots with soil all the way from the bottom to the top, there's a good chance that unless you put a layer of gravel or rocks at the bottom, that that soil will become compacted and over time it can clog up your drain holes. So by having a layer of either recyclables or something else at the bottom, it will help with the drainage towards the bottom of the pot and prevent some of that clogging that happens with the soil. So these are new containers. So the first thing I have to do is make sure that I have proper drainage. So I can see that at the bottom, there are some plugs that I'm gonna remove. And then I'm gonna give you a second option for something you can use inside these containers. You always wanna make sure that you clear any um, drain plugs or that you drain, uh, put proper drainage in your pots. Okay, so these are all set. By the way, if you like these, these are really pretty. I now have six of these. I bought them at Walmart. Um, I can link them below if I can find them on their website. But what I love most about them is that they are tall and that they're very lightweight. Um, while I love the look of porcelain and ceramic pots, um, even terracotta, once you add soil to them, they become very heavy. Um, and so they're difficult to move around the garden. And I love the aesthetic of these and I love that they are lightweight. I just noticed that this pot only has one hole in the middle and I don't think that's going to be enough. I want to make sure that I have proper drainage. That's super important. If you don't have proper drainage, it's a surefire way to root uh, rot your plants because it'll get waterlogged and then the roots will start dying and then kill your plant. So I'm going to actually drill a few more holes in here before I get ready to fill it. And the other thing I wanted to mention about the stuff that you're going to use to fill your container, such as the recyclables, obviously you just want to use plastic material because if you use cardboard and such, it's going to start breaking down with the moisture and then you'll end up getting like a sinkhole in your container. So just plastic is best. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill some additional holes in my container, but because I don't want to scratch the lip or the edges of my new pots, I'm going to do it on the grass. So I'm going to flip these over and I currently have one hole in the center. I'm going to add four more. See this stash right here? They're nursery part, pots or plant containers. We get them when we go shopping for plants and most of us gardeners have a stash of these. Now in my state, in Massachusetts, I'm not able to put these in the recycle bin. So what happens is I end up with a collection of them. And if I wanna get rid of them, the only thing I can do is maybe put an ad on Facebook Marketplace or something or find another gardener who is looking for containers to divide plants and so forth and I'm able to give them away that way. But otherwise, I end up with piles of these and I usually keep them in my shed. I recently took them out to organize them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look for some sizes that fit at the bottom of my container and I'm gonna show you how I use them. So 
so what I'm looking for is specifically a container that will be the diameter that will fit the diameter of my pot. And so this one comes equipped with a slug. So we want to get rid of that before we put it in there. Otherwise this will start attacking our plants. So I'm going to just get rid of that guy and I'm going to test fit to see if it fits in my container. And you want to put these upside down. Okay. You don't want to put them like this because if you put them like this, your soil is just going to fall right in here. So what you want to do is you want to flip them over and you want to place them at the bottom of your container. Now, if you take a look at this, I've essentially filled up my whole container with the exception of the top six inches that I'm gonna grow my annuals in. Now, because I'm only gonna put annuals in here, I'm not super concerned with having a lot of space for root development. They're only gonna be in here for a short period of time. So if this was something that you were going to plant, say, um, a shrub that you wanted to keep in here year round, you might want to go ahead and invest in the potting soil and fill this thing up to the top so that the roots have a place to go. Um, but again, because I'm only using these for annuals, I'm not concerned with that. So here I've essentially cut the space that I need to fill with soil in more than half. And also because this is up above the drainage holes, it's going to facilitate drainage and prevent my drain holes from getting clogged. Perfect, we're good to go. So last step is just to fill it up with potting soil. Here's something else that I always do when I am filling a new container with soil, and that is to line the bottom of my container or my pot with coffee filters. This is a good trick so that when you're watering your container, uh, you don't get a lot of that soil runoff that will make your patio or your porch all dirty. Um, it's a really good filter. It does break down over time, but if I'm newly planting a container, I do like to include these at the bottom. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put my filler back in, and then I'm gonna begin filling it with potting soil. Now I'm using this um, Stay Green potting soil. I am not loyal to any type of potting soil. If I'm working on uh, planting vegetables, I will stick to organic soils however, um, in compost. However, when I'm doing plants for uh, planters for flowers, I don't really care what I use. Typically, I go for what's most affordable. And so when I was looking, the miracle Grow was too expensive. It was almost, you know, at 17 or $18 for one this size. This is a 70 pound bag, it's 64 dry quarts. So I went with the uh, Stay Green at Lowe's. I wanna say this one was between 11 and $12. So it was much more cost effective. So that's why I chose it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my coffee filters in and begin filling my pots. That's a good save, huh? This guy is heavy. And just like that, my containers are filled. I still have about a half a bag of soil, potting soil left, and they're nice and lightweight. So I can just pick them up easily and place them where I want them. So not only does it help take up volume so that you're using less potting mix, it also makes your containers less heavy or more lightweight so that they're easier to handle in the garden. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.